Uh, hello, and uh, welcome to GenStack webinar dedicated to data verification uh, and the templates as an effective instrument for data harmonization. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And maybe before we start, just uh, uh, I'll briefly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Maria Bordenko, uh, and I work at GenStack for almost five years now. Uh, I joined the company. Uh, uh, a while ago uh, as a quality assurance engineer. And prior to this, I worked in healthcare IT. Uh, right now, my role is the senior solution consultant. And uh, mostly I work with our clients and uh, uh, prospective clients, uh, helping them uh, establishing an efficient data workflow and uh, uh, helping them to take care of their data. Uh, so uh, today uh, we are going to discuss why harmonizing your data is important and, and also we'll briefly touch the FAIR principles. Uh, or then we'll switch to the concept of a template uh, for describing a minimum metadata model. Uh, this is the solution which helps you harmonize your data that uh, we came up with at GenStack. Uh, and then we'll we'll talk about the default template in Omics Data Manager. Uh, this is our flagship product. Uh, it's a data management platform. We also will discuss how uh, multiple templates uh, for different experiment types can be used to increase the efficiency. And what are the rules behind that? Uh, and then we will um, touch a few topics like creating and updating templates within the system. And we will know how uh, uh, to retrieve a specified list of attributes uh, to, um, uh, to ensure that uh, interoperability of the data works as preferred principle. Uh, in the very end, we will have a Q&A session uh, but of course, you're welcome to put your question in the chat uh, box, uh, in the Q&A um, box while they appear, and we will uh, um, answer them in the end of the session. And uh, we are almost ready to start, uh, but before we start, uh, what I will suggest to you, uh, I would suggest you to join me in, uh, uh, in small uh, poll and uh, uh, ask um, answer just a few questions. Uh, now, uh, hopefully you can see the poll uh, at, your, uh, at your screens now. And actually my question is pretty uh, simple. Uh, what options uh, are the most suitable for describing your, uh, your data structure at the moment? Uh, maybe, uh, you have your data structured very well and you always know where to find what and never struggle with it. Uh, or there is a chance that you, you spend a lot of time to find uh, required data and you, you have to search in multiple different sources, but it kind of uh, uh, became uh, normal and uh, you, you kind of get used to it. Uh, or maybe you, you want to organize your data better and you're looking for a suitable solution at the moment. Oh, of course, maybe you, uh, um, you're about to, um, to organize some data storage for mixed data from scratch, and uh, uh, you want to do it uh, uh, in a proper way this time. And of course, maybe none of those options are suitable for you. So in this case, please uh, um, describe it in a few words uh, in, um, in, in the Q&A uh, box. Okay, uh, thank you for participating and thank you for your answers. So as uh, from what I see, uh, most of us uh, are still spending a lot of time on, on the data. And uh, uh, this is actually, let me just share the results with you. Uh, and hopefully you, you can see them now. Uh, so yes, this was the, the most uh, popular answer and uh, this is also seems to be uh, uh, true, and just recently, uh, about a month ago, 
uh, we at GenStack participated in a uh, plant and animal genome conference in San Diego, and we talked to many people from different industries, from uh, from academics, from small businesses, from huge companies, and uh, the it's really a common issue uh, that organizing data could be a real problem. Unless you you are the, the only science that work on uh, your own project and you have everything on your um, hard drive, in this case, it could be easy. But once it's more than this, it, 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 become, uh, uh, it, it could become a real nightmare. Um, and why do we still fight with our data and struggling to organize it uh, um, well and structured. There are actually uh, answers for this. Uh, of course, that's because we're getting more and more data. And now we have more data than ever uh, with uh, um, because generating data becomes much easier and, and cheaper. And as well, also more and more different data types appears uh, on the table, and then in, in the end, it, uh, um, it becomes harder and harder to, to manage this data. Uh, and trying to, uh, to help us work with this, there actually were created a bunch of different tools, analysis tools, uh, storages, and uh, uh, methodologies uh, to, work, uh, to work with your data. Uh, but in the end, uh, it still um, um, ended up uh, siloed uh, within these different systems uh, for each and every specific data type. And in many cases, uh, we're really struggling to find what we need to find. And this is not just words, because uh, uh, we, we can see the, the, the quote from uh, uh, from work, and they stated that actually uh, up to 80% of their data scientists' time spent just for cleaning and creating the data, uh, which of course is uh, uh, not uh, the most uh, uh, interesting and the most um, um, useful uh, uh, time spending. And uh, even research scientists, uh, they, they now have less and less time for some interesting and high-level tasks like experiment design or data interpretation, because instead of these, they, they, they have to uh, wrangle data uh, between different, um, uh, different sources and services and looking for it. And, uh, and yeah, we, we, we found this a, a real... Uh, a real uh, problem, a real disappointment that uh, overall uh, slowing down the, the researchers uh, in uh, uh, across all industries. Uh, there is uh, pretty pretty while ago uh, in uh, twenty sixteen um, an article on scientific data uh, has been published about the fair uh, guiding principles and. Uh, uh, before we just go, uh, may I, uh, I uh, ask you to to participate in other polls just to get a uh, more idea of uh, how how do, how familiar are you to the uh, fair data principles? So um, I'm launch just launch another poll. So maybe you uh, you aware of fair principles, uh, but you don't think that they could be uh, helpful and relevant for you. Or maybe you heard about this, but uh, you, you want to know more in, in terms of uh, how um, they can be practically implemented uh, uh, within your working group or your company. Or that that may be the truth that your data is fully fair and you're the happy person enjoying it. Or maybe you, you're familiar to this principle, but you're still in process of implementation and you have some struggles to uh, get the benefits of it. Uh, or it could be the case that you haven't heard uh, of uh, them uh, at all. Uh, thanks again for participating. Uh, so uh, let me share the results. And uh, from what I see, so uh, most uh, of people knows about it because the, the FAIR principle, uh, they, it's, they, they're very, um, very popular among the um, uh, those who are interested in uh, data uh, data management uh, at the moment, and uh, but the problem here that uh, 
data uh, uh, data verification principles are pretty straightforward, right? And we all know that uh, we, we what should be done upon the guidance to make data fundable, accessible, inter, uh, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, but speaking about these principles is usually much easier than really introducing them and implementing them. And uh, having data fair is more like not a, uh, um, just an easy achievable goal, but just kind of a moving target to which we should be like stretching all over the time. And uh, since even though it's known and, uh, and most of people agreed in the industry that the data should be fair, it's still a real problem to make it fair um, on day-to-day -day practice. And that's why we created our uh, our product, uh, Omics Data Manager, uh, which supports to help you doing this. And and for this uh, for this uh, proposes, we it actually consists of a few different models. Uh, it's an integrated data catalog for searchers. It's also uh, um, search services. Uh, we, we, from we, we, both of these models, they actually um, uh, they make data easy findable and uh, um, retrievable, so that it can be reused. Uh, but uh, on today's webinar, uh, I would like to focus on the uh, metadata curation model and uh, to talk uh, to you about uh, how the, the thousands of samples can be harmonized and how to make uh, all your colleagues to speak on the very same terms when they describe in the data and uh, what solution we came up uh, with to help you with this. Uh, so let's just move to uh, uh, to minimal data model as we envisioned it in uh, at GeneStack. Uh, basically, the solution we came up with is pretty straightforward and pretty simple, uh, but yet it's uh, really powerful and helpful. Uh, and it consists of just uh, the list of attributes that you're going to capture. And each uh, each attribute in the list uh, can uh, can have uh, some properties, and uh, all of these represented in a template. Uh, and then uh, when you're working with data, uh, you you look in uh, at your data for this template as if it is a filter or some kind of a, a lens. And this actually really help you for both uh, things for exploring your data and for creating your data. So um, this is just a screenshot from, uh, from our application. Uh, and th this is the starting page of Omics Data Manager. And uh, here uh, from the very starting page, you can click and navigate to the template editor. So this is the place when the templates are created and um, they can be stored, they can be browsed. Um, so, uh, but okay, you, you created this template, but when and how it really becomes actionable. And uh, the first time it, it, it really um, um, it kind of uh, uh, affects your data is when you import your data. And here I, I would like to start with example when you, uh, when you have your samples in an uh, Excel spreadsheet, and from what we hear from different sources, it's still very, very uh, commonly used practice to use Excel spreadsheets, just because we're used to them. And uh, uh, surprisingly, it uh, uh, turns out that uh, Excel is one of our uh, strongest competitors, even now. Uh, because people used to it and uh, they, they know how to work with it and it seems like pretty uh, easy to them. Uh, of course, later on, these samples can be loaded to some kind of database um, and stored somewhere else. Uh, but, but this is just like the, the some example, uh, example set of attributes. Uh, uh, but at the moment, when you're loading it uh, with a template to ODM, uh, uh, the samples, is, they actually um, um, 
uh, they started to be analyzed by the system at, at, at the same mom moment of import. And what is going on in the background is that uh, each and every template, loaded, each and every attribute loaded to the system, it's uh, uh, verified with the template. And if a match is uh, found, it will be assigned to the template attribute uh, and loaded as part of the minimum metadata model that you defined. In case there are more different attributes and something which is not uh, uh, defined as a template, it still will be loaded. It will be browsered, uh, so you can easily find it and see. It also can be indexed, and you can search your data by non-template attributes as well. But the trick here is that uh, uh, the template attributes are also can be validated. And uh, uh, by saying validated, I mean that uh, each and every value within this attribute will be checked against the rule that you set uh, in the uh, in the template originally. And in case anything of these uh, is going wrong, uh, the user will be immediately notified. And also, uh, you, you can see that here some of the uh, of the cells are highlighted with red, and there is also information that says some metadata is invalid. But you'll be not only notified, but also the, the help in the creation will be suggested uh, based on ontologies. Uh, but let's better switch to the application to show it uh, how it really looks like. So this is just an example study uh, from GEO uh, that I loaded prior to the webinar. And uh, uh, there are some samples, and as you can see, they have some invalid metadata uh, because they are not fully um, uh, fully valid against the template uh, which is used in the system right now. For example, the organism field is not filled at all, right? And uh, for the for the attribute sex, uh, the the values there there is F and M's, which are not from the dictionary that they're chosen to be uh, used. And also there are some other fields uh, which are not uh, which have not been filled right so in this case if uh, um, um, I have I don't have to manually check and try to ensure uh, what is uh, valid and what is not because the system has helped me and show me this in the um, in the moment um, and of course it can be uh, then um, it can be then fixed uh, uh, by multiple different things like we can um, um, we can assign a proper um, a proper values here uh, with the help of uh, uh, ontologies uh, which is also uh, a part of our minimal metadata model uh, because we uh, we're supposed to use the same ontologies across all our studies and uh, and this is how it can be uh, can be easily uh, tackled. This example of manual operations, we also have automated operations for uh, you know, creating the data. Uh, but yeah, right now uh, I mostly want uh, to focus on the on the creating coming up with the, uh, with these rules, uh, which uh, the data is checked. Uh, so uh, the, the question might be that, uh, uh, so the data we checked uh, um, against some kind of ontologies, but what are the ontologies they, which are used? And the answer here is it's fully dependent on you. If you want to use uh, some default set of ontologies, uh, we, we're providing these uh, uh, in ODM. And uh, there are some publicly available ontologies like NCBI and uh, um, Uberon anatomical entities, uh, but also there are some uh, um, ontologies created by our team to facilitate uh, uh, your creation. Uh, but in any case, if you have your custom ontologies, uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward to incorporate them, to import them into ODM select them for templates and uh, uh, they will be used uh, for your uh, uh, metadata model. Um, going uh, 
uh, bit uh, back to the template and uh, what exactly can be said and what are the limits uh, and uh, what are the um, the benefits of uh, of of the changes uh, of course there are there is some default uh, predefined uh, set of fields uh, which uh, um, which is there in the uh, omics data manager uh, but the thing is that at any time you can easily modify this template and based on uh, your specific needs and uh, the the thing that uh, what we recommend you to do is to uh, before doing it to have an agreement within all uh, groups or departments which will be um, uh, using the system uh, because the main thing is uh, uh, capture the um, capture the, the data uh, within um, the same attributes across all um, across all studies. Uh, this is important because uh, that's uh, crucial for for search. Uh, the good thing here is that any change uh, it can be done at any time, and uh, it's uh, applied on the fly. So you don't have to change some um, um, deep configuration within the system or wait for a new release or redeploy it. You can just change it and it appears straight away. Uh, so the things that can be defined, uh, just here I captured the, uh, quickly the list of them. And uh, so, uh, of course, you can define the name of your attribute. You can uh, set that some of the attributes should be required. Uh, that's what exactly what we see, uh, what we've seen um, when it showed the geo study, when uh, some uh, fields were highlighted as invalid just because they were uh, uh, they were empty. Uh, and this is basically uh, a good demonstration of. Uh, uh, data, both findability and reusability, uh, because it's very important that all your data should be uh, described with rich metadata. Because otherwise, if you will have some sample without uh, uh, having an idea from what organism is taken, it could be it, it couldn't be reused, and without some context and detailed context, uh, context uh, the data uh, will be useless and cannot be reused. Also, you can set the meta info type. Uh, you can uh, specify if some of the attributes should be read only. And of course, what we partially touch already, you can assign a dictionary. So we can now go and open one of the templates uh, let's just go to the default one and have a look here. So uh, first of all, the list of attributes can be described separately for all available entities uh, on the on the platform. So you you can describe the study, and here are just suggested list of like study source, description type, uh, study design, therapeutic area, etc. Uh, you also can describe the uh, the attributes for samples, and uh, uh, we recommend to set uh, um, as a, so so all fields that you uh, you want to be uh, filled in for each and every um, each and every sample, and without uh, which uh, there is no uh, sense in having the sample. It's recommended to set uh, to be uh, required. You also can uh, uh, can assign a needed uh, meta info type, uh, so system knows what to expect. And in case uh, um, uh, a string is sent instead of a date or decimal, uh, it also will be considered as invalid. And uh, you can set some of those uh, read only, and this is uh, mostly for technical attributes, uh, like uh, for example, uh, if you're speaking about a unique identifier. Uh, and this is also a part of uh, um, fair principles that they should be unique across the system and they should be persistent. So that's why you can set them to be read only and they can be changed uh, later on. 
um, here also you 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 are able to choose uh, among any of the uh, um, existing dictionary or load your your own dictionary ontology and assign it. Uh, and once you assign it, uh, this ontology will be used for this specific uh, attribute across all studies using the template. Uh, it could be helpful even if uh, uh, there are just some, um, um, if you have, uh, for example, uh, um, a list of uh, a list of departments you, you, you can, uh, or maybe a list of uh, zeros you're getting data from. You can create them as a simple uh, CSV file, load it, and instead of typing it every time, you, your users will be just prompted to choose one of the options, uh, which definitely saves some time to them. And what also can be done here, uh, you can uh, um, you can put a, a short description of the field just to, to give people more idea what to expect and what to um, do. Uh, what should be filled in, in, in this specific field uh, and how it should be properly used. Uh, this is just to avoid any kind of um, ambiguity or confusion when, you know, sometimes uh, uh, some of the terms could be uh, could be not that straightforward, like sample source could be either a lab from where you come or, or maybe a tissue. So for, for this, you can put a small description. And uh, any of this description will be immediately seen uh, when you um, um, uh, when you just uh, hover over the uh, the attributes while you're working with your data. Uh, also here, uh, uh, th this is a view for the for the study, which having some uh, samples link and having some data link in our system. And uh, uh, here, all the attributes which are come from templates and which are reliable and verified based on the set rules, uh, they are color highlighted with uh, with yellow, right? And uh, also, when you uh, hover the mouse, you can see uh, you can see that uh, it's from template. The rest of attributes here, uh, they are loaded, but you just have a, uh, uh, you have a note that they are not uh, from template. You can still use this data, but it's just not validated. Um, and uh, the thing that I wanted to demonstrate is how uh, we easily can add something new. Uh, so let's just for this purpose, just add some test attribute uh, to, our, to our samples and maybe make it uh, required. And uh, if we just uh, go back to our study and uh, we'll update the page, uh, we will see now that uh, there is the attribute. So it appears just uh, um, almost in uh, almost immediately, right? And since originally it was it was said to be required, uh, right now our um, so the, the study is revalidated. And now we have another issue, another problem that the test attribute is not filled. And uh, uh, what about uh, creating new templates? Uh, of course, you can use uh, the one uh, uh, which is which comes with the uh, ODM, uh, but in case uh, you want to adjust it uh, to suit better to your specific needs, um, uh, it's uh, easy and straightforward to to create a new one. Uh, so here is just a, a screenshot that you. Um, you can easily find you can find this, the the template which looks almost uh, similar to what you want. You can duplicate it, create a copy, rename, and then uh, change what, what's needed, or maybe add uh, some additional fields or remove some fields which you're not uh, using. Um, uh, this is one way to do it. It can be done in the uh, uh, easy directly in the template editor app. But also what you can do, uh, you can create the template programmatically. 
or you can export uh, one of the existing ones, you can alter it and uh, load it back to ODM. So uh, creating a template is uh, really very easy. You just click on it, uh, you click on duplicate and new uh, copy of the template is created. Uh, just a small recommendation that it's always better to rename it straight away uh, to make it uh, recognizable and easy to distinguish from uh, the other templates. Uh, now, once I created it, uh, what I can do, I can assign this template to some of the study. And actually, uh, Assigning a template, uh, there are a uh, few things, a uh, few ways how it can be done. It either can be done directly on import, as we discussed in the very beginning, right? Because the template is applied uh, uh, while you upload the data into ODM. But also, if later on you uh, find some more um, suitable template, or if there is a change uh, or uh, some update of your templates, in just a few clicks, uh, you can go to your study, you can find out the, uh, the, the current template, you can apply another, and you will see the list of templates available on the instance. You can choose any. Let's just choose the one I've just created, and we can apply it. Uh, so that's these uh, uh, straightforward and easy. And again, all the changes are applied immediately. And in case there were any uh, inconsistencies between the data types, you also can use uh, uh, this button for automatic convertation of values um, according to newly applied template. It works uh, for strings. It can be uh, converted into integers or decimals if there are any. Uh, almost the last topic that I want to discuss is that uh, you don't have to create just one template for each and every study uh, you're working on. Uh, this especially could be helpful if you have few departments of your you're working on different types of studies. And in this case, uh, each department can have their own attribute, uh, their own uh, templates with their specific uh, attributes. But uh, what is uh, very important here uh, that uh, the very same uh, uh, some core set of attributes uh, is uh, really recommended to to have it uh, uh, named uh, uh, exactly the same, right? So to have some kind of uh, set of default template attributes, the minimal metadata one, uh, the one which could be valid across all uh, study types and across all uh, like even um, R&D and preclinical, right? And uh, then you can extend this template with some additional attributes specific to, um, um, to your area like in this example, and of course it still can be some non-template attributes, uh, which will be there in the system. Later on, if you will work with your data, or if you create some kind of integration with a downstream analysis or visualization tools, uh, it will be up to you which set of uh, uh, attributes to get. Right, so this will be either this minimal data from the default template, which we just show, or it could be an extended data, including some specific and uh, additional attributes from your specific template, or it could be just like everything that originally have been loaded uh, with all the non-template attributes. So, uh, and now just almost uh, wrapping uh, up, uh, but uh, I just want to, to highlight that uh, for implementing FAIR principles, um, it cannot be done just uh, if you work just in one direction, because it's usually a, a kind of a multiple effects of different things. So of course, you will need to set up the processes 
but without engagement from your team and people really uh, following this uh, these principles and like you know entering the um, the metadata using the anthologies uh, using selected anthologies it won't work and uh, to fully incorporate it uh, into your work you will you will need to have a cultural change uh, and it can be not that easy and uh, fast uh, but what can facilitate this uh, process is to have an easy uh, to use tools which will help you to facilitate it uh, and which will um, um, which will uh, just uh, uh, engage your team easily and uh, if there is a software that's easy and straightforward to use uh, which help you to harmonize your data it's uh, easier to follow rules and capture it in a proper way uh, so thank you uh, for for your uh, for your time uh, hopefully you you found something uh, useful uh, in this talk for you and now I just want to, uh, to, to say that this is not a single uh, webinar but just a series of webinars and uh, we'll, we'll, would like to have a minute uh, just in giving words to uh, Fatima Sabitova uh, to uh, maybe to, to say a few words regarding uh, upcoming uh, webinar uh, in, in the month. Yeah, so um, hello everyone, really nice to meet you. My name is Fatima, but you can call me Tima. I am also a solutions consultant here at GeneStack, but I'm not senior. I am a young scientist who is interested in all kinds of random things that uh, loves to explore different types of data sets. And to do that, I use our own platform, ODM. So I'm really familiar with it, how uh, it works and what can you do with it. And one exciting thing that you can do with it actually is machine learning, because there is this principle called garbage in, garbage out, which means if you have a poor quality data or you don't have enough data, which can be lost elsewhere, or you can have troubles like uploading it in a proper format, then you will have a garbage out, no matter how good a system you create, how good your machine learning algorithm will be, you're not going to come to anything. So in my webinar, I'm going to cover things like how to create an efficient machine learning model. We're going to do it using the very basic machine learning without any deep learning or things like that. But we're going to see how a good quality data will affect your results and how I personally would use ODM to do the machine learning on the biological data. Okay. Uh Thank you, Tima. Uh, I really hope to, uh, uh, to we both hope to see you uh, on, on, on the next webinar. Uh, and just, uh, we still have some time left. Uh, so if there is, there are any questions, you, you're welcome to ask them. Actually, we have some questions on the Q&A section. So if I just go ahead and read them out for you, what do you think? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Tima. Yes, so I'm going to start, there are many thank yous, but not many questions, actually, I'm going to, I think we'll cover three questions on the section. So the first one is really simple. Uh, are there any automatic ways to upload a template? So you've seen that you can duplicate a template to create a new one and then manually edit it in the interface. I think that was the question. So do you, can you make it automatically? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the, we, we have special scripts for loading the templates, and it's uh, it's, it's a uh, pretty straightforward Python script. All you need to do is uh, prepare your template in JSON format, and it can be easily loaded uh, into ODM. Yeah, that's true. So the second question is, uh, let me read it for you. Can anyone in the system... I mean, I think he means the users can add and change the templates because if there are too many users, it can get messed up. Yeah, that that that's a really good question. Thank you, thank you for this. Uh, so there are actually um, talking about permissions of users. There are a few different things. Uh, first of all, we have the concept of data curators. Who can um, um, who can actually create data, right? Or can contribute in data, change and alter existing data, uh, and uh, users who are just researchers and who can browse the data, query the data, but not change it or create new. And of course, changing the template is available just for creators. 
uh, but also uh, there is a, a more um, a separate permission to be able to alter the template itself. Because as, uh, as I mentioned, once you change, uh, you, you can just add a new field and this field will automatically appear on all uh, studies in the system. So that's why for being able to alter the template, uh, you will need a special permissions uh, uh, and uh, template set up permission, which more kind of an uh, administrator permissions. Great. So the last question here, uh, can you, I think that this one was asked before you covered it, but still I'm going to read it out. So can you attach your own scientific ontologies that you created yourself as a file, or you can only use the ones from the public sources? Oh, uh, yes, of course you, you can, uh, you, because we, we, we know that uh, uh, depending on the, the specific uh, uh, domain and your study, sometimes you need very, very specific uh, terms which are used. And th that's why, of course, you, you can create your, uh, your own ontology or dictionary and load it. And we support just like uh, the, the most common, like... Uh, um oval we support we will support uh, just just the csv files and uh, some as so all, all the commonly used uh, dictionaries and ontologies are supported and can be uh can be loaded uh into just tag again via, via the python script yep i agree i did it once myself so it works <laughs> uh great so uh many thanks for attendance and thanks for questions and uh, hopeful, uh, hope to see you uh, again in a month. Uh, and I'm really excited to uh, to learn more about the uh, about the uh, machine learning and what actually can be done on the created data once you introduced uh, your your templates and make uh, made sure that it's it's all harmonized. Uh, thank you. Uh, have a, a lovely rest of the day. Bye. Yeah, bye.